it's Don here from the board. Uh, thanks for coming along and checking out this video. So what you would have already seen in the first bit just then would have been uh, probably a time lapse of me stripping apart the old case that the Leopold came in and then me trying to put it into the new case, which is the UE 660C case. Now this is a prototype and there will be a tag somewhere up there as usual on when I did the unboxing to have a look at it. Now, previously I talked about that uh, I was probably going to think about what kind of options I had for a case bottom, but the issue that I ran into, which is why I stopped the time lapse, was how on earth am I going to mount this daughter board? And the standard mounting for the daughter board is that the case bottom has some standoffs and it sort of sits in in there and it screws into that but because i don't have a case bottom i can't really do that here i don't have any means to do that and the depth of what uh sir cheddar had actually machined in here was only two mil thick and with the actual brass standoffs provided it doesn't give you a lot of depth to work with to make something to actually drill it tap it whatever if it wasn't going to be metal which i don't really have that capacity for. So, instead, uh, I've gone for a really uh, functional way of putting this together. Now, I know it looks terrible, and it's really weird, and it's really clunky, but I have faith that it works. So, what I've gone and done, after I've fitted the six mounting screws for the actual entire assembly here, is that I've used double-sided stick tape, quite strong stuff, to stick down these craft sticks. Now their positions are a bit weird, but the reason for that is because I couldn't put them over the top of where the screws are to take off the PCB. Because later on, if you wanted to do a spring swap, a dome swap, or whatever other modification that was required, you still want to be able to access the PCBs without affecting where I've stuck down this supporting layer. Additionally, I've had to make space for the resistors, the resistors over here, the controller, the controller, and similarly, I've had to leave gap because of where the actual dip switch uh, pins go through and get in the way of that uh, supporting base that I've got here. And then on the other side, I've covered the entire back of the daughter board with the same double stick tape. And the intent is that I'm going to peel it off right now, I'm going to line it up, and I'm going to stick it down. And that will keep it in place. Of course, later on, if you do want to access these screws underneath, you will have to. I mean, there's only one that's actually going to be covered fully by the looks of it. But you will have to peel that off. Or, of course, alternatively, I could take out that one screw right now, and it would never be an issue. Um... Let's do it. Let's just take out that one screw because I don't believe it will significantly impact the function of this board. Uh, if it does, then, well, I'm going to have to eat my metaphorical hat and then I'll have to peel that off and I'll have to screw it back in. But I don't believe it will. There's enough screws there to support and keep the plate uh, mounted onto the PCB that it should not be an issue at all. Okay, so now with that in place, every other screw that is potentially impacted can be accessed freely without really any interruption. That one's going to be close, uh, but I believe you can still... Yeah, that'll still come out. That'll still come out. Okay, so I just want to make sure that's relatively centered so I know roughly where I'm going. And then off comes this strip. Now, the serial number underneath, I've actually put, there's a serial number that you can see underneath there. I've actually put a piece of magic tape over that first before the double side stick tape so that if you peel it off for whatever reason, the serial number should still be somewhat protected from this adhesive. 
the silk screen and everything else is not really important as far as uh, keeping that level of detail. So here goes nothing. Uh, I'm going to try and center that as best as I can. There's plenty of space there. I'm going to butt that daughter board right up against the actual metal and then give it a really good firm press all across the top of it with my dirty greasy fingers and it should be good. I don't think that's going to go anywhere anytime soon. Now, then of course we'll just connect the connector back in and it should be good to go. So that'll be that should be that should be really solid now. I mean, pressing on that it's not going anywhere. It doesn't seem to be lifting up. All of these paddle pop sticks are pretty even in their height as part of just how they're manufactured on mass. And I suppose the the litmus test here is the fact that despite the fact that you can see that there's paddle pop sticks there, um, <laughs> here's a, a USB mini B connector and it's perfectly fine. Uh, you know, the connector itself is wobbling, but that's uh, a separate issue to... Ooh, that doesn't look good at all. Um, that's going to rip off the pads. So, that's probably going to need some kind of uh, support. If Yeah, that's really, really iffy right there. So... That is a separate issue that I'll have to deal with later on, uh, but if I rip off those pads, I'm not going to have a good time at all. At all, at all, at all. Just thinking about how am I going to potentially reinforce that. I could probably use some more paddle pop sticks and, you know, wedge it down flat somewhere, somehow. But um, I'll deal with that at a separate stage. So, I don't think that's going to go anywhere, despite the fact that that port is about to fail. And if it fails, I'm going to have a bad time. Uh, might need to get a Hasu replacement or something like that. Uh, and empty out a spare one. Okay, so there you go. That is it fully assembled now with no case bottom. Uh, what we want to do, I guess, is do a bit of... Typing sound sample, because people love typing sound samples. There's like, there's no flex on this. Oh, there's a little bit, but i got to press really hard for it. I think the six mounting points on the sides work really well for it. So I'm pretty happy with that in general. So I'm not going to plug the cable in, because obviously there's a risk there of ripping out that connector. But let's get the microphone down and do a sound sample for you. Well, I guess one of the, the technical flaws of this current design really is just around that USB port and its position and its unsupportedness, because uh, that is a massive, massive risk there. But other than that, I think it sounds really lovely, and it's got a different kind of depth compared to the plastic case. I think having this steel sorry, this aluminium uh, around it really does absorb a bit more of that vibration and shock. Now, I haven't actually put the bump-ons there, but I don't think it's going to make that much difference. 
the fuckiness of it, the echoness of it, may sound different once there is a back to this, but as far as prototyping goes, you know, this board is not going to go traveling the depths of the world, for example, so it's not that big a deal. Uh, I might take it to meetups, and of course I would transport it quite carefully, so it's not going to get damaged. I'll probably knock up a bit of cardboard using, you know, cereal box cardboard just to protect it from, you know, dust and accidental ingress of other things. But other than that, I think it's pretty much done for now because there's not much else I can do. Uh, my biggest concern is still going to be what's going on on that daughter board. I will have to think up some creative solutions, I think, to uh, making that safe for use. Now, I could use this at home, uh, which, you know, it'd be okay, but um, I probably wouldn't use this at work because it having an exposed back like that is probably just asking for a bit of trouble. Uh, yeah, although it would look really nice at work. So I'm just finishing off putting on these little bump on feet just because I can. And uh, so Cheddar has sent an insane amount of screws because they were supposed to go around for a bottom piece that didn't exist. <laughs> but <clears throat> what I can say is that this UE uh, 660C prototype has already significantly advanced to the next iteration and the CB version, which is the low profile version of it. Uh, and it's actually production ready. Uh, there is actually a mini group by that uh, Sir Cheddar has run for the UE board and it looks really great. So I'll have the link in the video description below and you can go check that out. If you're interested in getting a alternative custom case for the 660C. Okay, so that's there you go. Yes, what is it? Yeah, do you want to press it? Does it feel good? Do you like it? Yeah, do you like all keyboards? Well, go have your breakfast. Um, <laughs> Mommy hasn't made my breakfast yet. Okay, <clears throat> well that's it. That's a wrap for this video. Uh, I hope you liked having a quick look at what this prototype looks like. It's unfinished. Uh, you know, it obviously has problems, but it's a prototype. If you like this kind of design, this kind of style, do go check out the UE uh, keyboards from Sir Cheddar. So thank you for coming along and checking out this video. And of course, as usual, until next time, happy clacking. So what were you saying? Daddy took off all the colored ones, and they're black ones. Now what? It's not a real keyboard anymore. Why is it not a real keyboard anymore? Because it's not letters or colors. But Daddy's other keyboards don't have colors on them. Yes, it... they do. No, oh, but what about Mommy's keyboard? Mommy's keyboard doesn't have colors. Is Mommy's keyboard not a real keyboard? It is a keyboard. It's a real keyboard. But there's no colors. It's still a real keyboard. So why is this one not a real keyboard if there's no colors? Because it's not letters either to write stuff on. So do you need letters for it to be a keyboard? Yeah. Oh, okay. Go on. <laughs>